What is going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about AWS SAM, which stands for Serverless Application Model. Uh, now, AWS SAM is a very useful tool that allows developers to write their infrastructure as code, as opposed to having to go into the console to do so. Um, so looking at what we have in front of us here on this white background, this is an example of a template file. And a template file is what you, the developer, write in order to generate all the resources that are defined within the file. Uh, so we can see here we're using a kind of serverless construct. This allows you to easily create an AWS Lambda function. Uh, there's different uh, template recipes where you can basically create anything on AWS. So from S3 to SNS to SQS to Dynamo to any basic resource that you can imagine. Very, very powerful tool. Uh, so in this video, what I want to do is show you how to kind of get started with this and how to set up a very basic REST API using API Gateway and Lambda. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now, there are a couple prerequisites which I have over here on the left uh, in order to kind of follow along. So the first one is that you need to have the AWS CLI installed. And the AWS CLI is the command line interface that allows you to basically run commands on your AWS account from your terminal. The second thing is that you're going to need to configure your AWS CLI with a user that has some very liberal permissions. Um, and I have a whole video on how to create users with permissions uh, if you don't know how to do this. But essentially, you're probably going to want administrator access or something that has all the permissions to create the resources that you're about to define in your template file. So just keep that in mind. And the third one is that you need to install SAM. It's a very straightforward process. Um, you just kind of go to their, their website and download this. I'll leave a link down below. And then as well, you're going to need to install Docker. Now, this one is a little bit optional. If you want to run SAM locally, then you're going to need Docker. This is a very useful tool um, running SAM locally, that is in terms of just testing your application locally before developing. So that's uh, kind of what you're gonna need to do. Now, in terms of what we are actually building, let me get rid of this and get rid of this and show you what we're doing. Okay, so starting at the bottom here, the first thing that we're gonna need is an IEM user that, like I mentioned, has some very generous um, policies or permissions attached to it. From there, you're gonna need your AWS CLI and SAM CLI configured. And if you're on Windows, you'll be doing that probably in PowerShell. And if you're on uh, Mac or Linux, you'll be doing it in just your vanilla terminal. So make sure that you can go to your terminal and type the command AWS and the CLI prompts you. And also that you can type in um, SAM and the CLI prompts you. Those are kind of two tests that you can do to ensure that you have everything set up. Uh, from there, we're going to define our template file in a browser of choice. And then from there, we're going to use SAM to build our source code. And that's going to upload that source code to S3. And then in terms of the AWS resources that we need for the API Gateway and Lambda, uh, we're going to have a template that's responsible for going out to create that API Gateway endpoint, going out to create that Lambda uh, function, and then kind of wire these two things together. Uh, so essentially, that's what's going to happen. We're going to define a template, upload that to CloudFormation. CloudFormation is going to create all this stuff. Separately, we'll be uploading our source code into S3. All of this stuff is going to be managed by SAM. So this is what we're going to be doing in this presentation. I'm going to move over to the console now and just show you what's going on. All right, guys. So here we are in my terminal. So as I mentioned, make sure that you have the AWS CLI installed. You can test that by just typing in AWS into your terminal. As you can see here, I have a prompt. You should see the same thing. Also make sure that you have SAM installed by typing SAM and that should show a prompt as well. Uh, if you don't know how to install these things, I'm gonna leave some links down below in the description section so that you can follow along. Uh, but make sure that you have all of this set up so that you can kind of proceed as per this tutorial video. Uh, now the final thing that you're gonna wanna do is configure your um, AWS CLI with the right IAM permissions. So how you normally do that is by typing in AWS configure. And I already have mine configured, but I'll just show you what it's gonna ask. So it's asking for my access key ID, my secret access key ID, a whole bunch of things here. So in order to get the access key ID and the secret access key ID, I can just show you really quick. Uh, you need to go into the IAM section of the AWS account and create a user that, as I mentioned previously, has some pretty generous privileges. Uh, so for instance, the one that I have is 
the administrator access and I'm using one that's very, very liberal. So it allows me to do anything. Uh, generally, you should have more uh, kind of specific policies, but you can see here. Uh, so that's kind of one of the setup steps that you're going to need to do. So let me just minimize that and show you the project that we are going to be working with. Um, so close that real quick. Let me just show you the structure. So um, I'm just calling this the SAM demo and we're going to have a SAM app. And by the way, this source code is generated using the AWS wizard, which has a kind of quick start mode, but I've just kind of greatly simplified it. I've cut out some of the nonsense that you don't really need to care about just to give you kind of the bare bones in terms of what you need to know. Um, so our, the one important file that you're going to want to know about is obviously the app.py. Uh, this is going to be our main um, handler function for our Lambda. So you can see that we have a sign signature called Lambda Handler, it takes in an event and our context. And uh, I added some custom code here to show you how you can extract some query string parameters. Um, so I'm going to pass in person ID to this API a little bit later in the video. And then I'm going to extract that out and store that in person ID variable. And then I'm going to return a response that has the person ID um, in the body. So it's going to be person ID just plus something cute here, just so I can prove to you that indeed this call is coming from me. Um, so this is the Lambda handler. So this is where you can add any of your logic to do any of the heavy lifting for your application. Uh, now, how does this connect to the actual AWS resources? Now, in order to understand that, we have to look at the template.yml file, YML, excuse me, that is over here. Uh, so if we look at this guy, let's uh, kind of try to understand what we're what we're seeing here. So starting from the top, we have a template version, a kind of transform. We don't need to care about this stuff. Uh, the real meat of where the magic happens is in the resources section. Uh, so we are defining a hello world function. This could be anything that you want. And it's going to be a type of serverless. Now, this is a kind of custom construct, the serverless construct uh, built, I believe, by the SAM team. Essentially, it's a shortcut that allows you to build a API gateway and a Lambda function in one entity or one row. Uh, so behind the scenes, they're kind of, you know, interpreting this as creating two separate resources and then wiring them up. But if you use this kind of construct that they made for you, uh, you don't have to worry about all the semantics of wiring them together. It's all kind of handled for you. So that's the advantage of using some of these custom uh, constructs that you see here, such as serverless. Uh, and then we're defining some properties on the Lambda function and on the API that we're creating. So we're giving it a URI of where our code is going to be hosted. So this is going to be an S3 in the hello world sub bucket. Um, we're giving it a pointer to our apps handler. So our remember our um, app.py, it was called Lambda underscore handler. And so we're reflecting that over here, uh, app.lambda underscore handler. We're saying we're using Python 3.8, and then we're saying what the events are gonna be to invoke this Lambda function. And it's gonna be a hello world API. That's what we see here. And we're gonna build a slash hello API. It's gonna be of type get. So that's how to create a Lambda function, basically. It's very, very simple using SAM. Uh, and we're gonna see how to deploy this. Let's just check out what's going on down here in the output section. So another thing that you can do with CloudFormation is define custom um, kind of strings that can be used in other applications in the same stack. So that's kind of what we're doing here. So we're defining a string whose name is hello world API. So that's the key. And the value is gonna be this thing, right? But this thing, we also have sub in front of it. And uh, so what CloudFormation is going to do when it gets this is it's going to look for this special annotation here, dollar sign, open, close, curly, and the key that you have inside. So serverless REST API, it's going to substitute um, the variable that corresponds to this. So if the variable that corresponds to serverless REST API is foobar, what you're going to see is HTTPS colon slash slash foobar dot execute dash API, right? So you get the idea of substitution. Same thing for a region. So any template file that you define in terms of the region, um, it's going to the, the value is going to get substituted with the value that you're deploying into. So if you're deploying to US East 1, then this is going to be substituted with the US East 1. US West 2, it'll get substituted for that, so on and so forth. Uh, to continue this a little bit more, we're defining a variable called hello world function. This is just going to be the ARN of our hello world function, which we define up here. That's fine. And we're also defining uh, a string to continue the role ARN for that Lambda function. So far, this is looking pretty sane. So just as a reminder, uh, back in the Lambda, we're going to be taking in person ID and returning something cute 
see on the other side containing that input value. That's all we need to do in terms of the code. Um, you can kind of minimize this for now. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be making this code available on GitHub um, in case you want to follow along. You can clone the repository so you can um, kind of play with this on your own time. So minimizing that now, let's bring back our PowerShell where we are going to run uh, some commands here. They're going to help us get started. So make sure that you're in the correct location or the, the correct directory. So you need to go to the root directory of your application. So mine happens to be inside Sam app. So that's where our template.yml is located. I'm just typing clear now to make everything go away. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is build our application. So we're going to type in Sam build. And what this is going to do is essentially pull down all the dependencies that you've um, specified as part of your Python uh, Lambda handler, and then kind of compile them all down into a usable format that um, Sam and Lambda can understand. So you can see here that that succeeded, which is great. We're going to ignore this thing for now. Actually, we're going to run this command here. So let me just type that out. So Sam deploy dash dash guided. Now, since this is our first time, you want to use the guided flag, which is going to ask us some um, just basic questions that we need to answer about the application. Uh, afterwards, you're not going to have to do the guided mode, so you can just do SAM deploy. So let's just explore what this gives us. Um, so it's asking us for stack name. SAM app is fine. I like US East 1. Let's stay there. Um, it's asking us if we want to confirm changes before we deploy. So this is, uh, I suggest you put this to yes. And the reason is because when you make a change to your infrastructure, um, when you do SAM deploy, it's going to show you a preview of what it's going to change before you actually execute it. So very useful just to validate that your changes aren't going to do anything unexpected. So I suggest you put that to Y. That's what I'm going to be doing here. Um, we're going to create a IAM role for SAM. Going to put Y in there as well does not have authorization to finance this. Okay, yeah, this is okay. If you wanna add authorization using AWS Cognito, you can do that. Uh, since this is just a basic demo, I'm not gonna show you how. We're just gonna put Y for that. Save arguments to config, Y, configuration file, Y, environment, default, Y. A lot of stuff, um, you can kind of get into the nitty gritty of this and see how it works. But for this demonstration purpose, we're just gonna kind of leave a lot of these as default. So what is it doing now? So it's looking for resources needed for deployment, not found, interesting. Um, it's creating the required resources. So let's go into AWS CloudFormation now and take a look. So type in, in Cloud Formation, Formation. Um, since this is the first time we're running it, yeah, so you can see here, create in progress. Uh, so like I was saying, since this is the first time we're running it, there's a bunch of like scaffolding that needs to get set up, such as the S3 bucket that's going to contain all of our source code, stuff like that, like IAM roles and permissions. So if you click into this guy and uh, you take a look at what's going on here by going into events, you can see that uh, we're creating a whole bunch of different things here. By clicking on resources, we can see the types of those things. So we can see um, we create an S3 bucket policy and we create an S3 bucket. So that's the stuff that, uh, like I said, it's going to contain our source code. And by the way, if this screen is unfamiliar to you, if you don't know much about CloudFormation, maybe because this is your first time using it with Sam, uh, I have a whole other video on AWS CloudFormation and how to do all these steps manually, like creating the, the template, uploading it manually, triggering the change, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if this is your first time with CloudFormation, I'd highly suggest watching that video first. It'll kind of boost your confidence and explain how all of these things work. I'll leave a link to that video in the description section below and also a link at the end of this video so you can kind of check that out a little bit later. So just refreshing this now. Um, so we're creating a second thing here. Let's just check our console really quick. Um, okay, so the first part succeeded. Let me make this a little bigger. Yeah, so the first part succeeded. Um, so it's giving us a preview now of what our actual application is gonna deploy. So this is not in terms of the scaffolding anymore. This is in terms of you know the app that we've defined as per the template right here. So our Lambda function, our API gateway endpoint, our outputs, all that stuff. That's what it's showing us here in this preview section. So it's showing us that we're going to add a couple different resources. These are the IDs of these resources. These are the different types of them. So Lambda permission, IAM role, Lambda function, API gateway, stage deployments, uh, REST API. This is all looking pretty good and in accordance with our uh, template file. And you can see why this is useful to have, right? If you accidentally screw up and, you know, mistype something and it results in something being removed, it's very useful to see what's going to be done before you actually do it. So it's giving us a preview here. Nothing has happened yet despite this same 
saying review in progress. Note it says review, uh, so that's why nothing is happening yet. Now, as soon as I press Y here, this is gonna start deploying. So it's gonna give us a essential one-to-one uh, -one match of kind of what's happening in the CloudFormation console through this little visual here. And then we can actually go in here and follow along. So now you see it says create in progress as opposed to review in progress. If you go over to um, events, you can see things are uh, happening. So click and refresh, things constantly are being created by uh, CloudFormation. So what are we seeing here? Um, we're creating permissions, we're creating REST APIs, we're creating our Lambda function. Uh, this can take a few minutes just because you're creating a whole bunch of different resources. So you may have to be a little bit patient with it. D the larger your um, your template file, obviously the larger this is gonna, uh, the longer duration this is gonna take rather to um, actually set this up and create all the resources. So uh, we can see after just a few moments, the SAM app, which is the kind of name of the stack, SAM app, you can see over here, uh, is now completed. So that is great news. Let's check out over here. Um, so it's giving us some like confirmation information. That's great. But what I want to do is just verify as a sanity check. Uh, let's actually duplicate this window so we can come back to it later. And let's go into the Lambda section to verify that this is actually created just as a sanity check. And we have a hello world function. So that was our function that we created and it belongs to Sam app. And you can see that it's connected to an API gateway. So if we click on this guy, it shows us that we're using the SAM apps API gateway uh, to trigger this Lambda function. If I click on that, it'll take me into the API gateway section where it confirms that we are indeed creating a hello REST API endpoint, which is of type get. So everything looks to be working really well there. So I believe it actually gives us the endpoint. Yes, it does. So it gives us the API endpoint. So I can take this right now and like, you know, this is hosted in the cloud. This is a real live endpoint that any application can start using now. Notice it does have a funky name in front of it in order to give it kind of a normal looking name. You would need to map a DNS record to this um, so that you can you know, have your website's name here, whatever. Uh, I'll make a different video on that. But if we uh, go up here and just start a new tab, and remember, we, we said that we're gonna pass in person ID. Let's say our person ID is five. If you remember what our code is supposed to do, it's supposed to say, um, what was it actually? Let's just double check. So app.py, we're just saying, um, so it'll be five in this case, five from Lambda. So let's, let's verify this is working correctly. Um, so there we go. So we just basically got a JSON object back that is running um, based on a REST API built on a Lambda function. Super, super awesome, right? Um, so that kind of shows you how to get started in terms of deploying to the cloud, but this doesn't really answer the question of like, what if I want to make some changes locally? I want to do some testing locally before I actually deploy this stuff, right? So how can you, you do that? So let's, let's show you how that can work. Um, so there's a functionality as part of SAM where you can start um, deploying your application locally using Docker. So make sure that you have Docker installed if you're gonna attempt this step or else you're gonna have a whole bunch of errors as soon as you try to start these commands. So I'm gonna type in sam local start dash API. And what this is gonna do is essentially launch a Docker container. And now we can see here that um, it's running on our local machine. So I'm just gonna copy this, um, control C for copy. Let's go back into this. Uh, start a new tab. I'm gonna put in um, the same thing um, that I just copied. Remember, it's the slash hello endpoint. And then we're gonna say person ID, let's say is equal to six this time. And so this is a local invocation, not on the cloud. So this allows you to, to test changes locally, see how your Lambda function is gonna work, things like that. So you see here, the correct number is returned back. So that shows you how to test and deploy locally. So this is just a very simple example of how you can get started with SAM, just to build a, a simple API gateway and Lambda function. Uh, again, I'll make this source code available uh, down in the description section on GitHub so you can try this out. If you like this video, you should check out the one on the right here on an introduction to CloudFormation. And as always, if you liked it, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.